ancestor uh, fought at Bimmy Ridge and uh, in the Hundred Days War. I'm carrying on the memory of my great great uncle. He was uh, with the 51st Machine Gun Corps, and uh, he did a good job. Had that feel you wanted to know what it was like for him, what it must have been like. Everybody has blisters, some worse than others, and they can't march anymore. You're scared for your life, okay? You, you don't even want to be out there. It becomes very real. The psychology is real, the people are real, the reactions are real. If you can just walk away with something, that, that's what I'm looking for, and that's what I hope to, uh, to get out of it. In 1914, Canada called for volunteers to enlist for service in the First World War. Ninety years later, a call was issued for descendants of those soldiers and nurses to participate in an epic docudrama reenactment. I'm excited. 6,500 young Canadians applied. Uh, I don't know what to expect right now, actually. So, uh, kind of 50-50. Now, 150 descendants have been chosen. They will spend two weeks living like 1914 Army recruits, trying to understand the experience of their ancestors. Thank you. What happens when historical conditions meet 21st century reality? It's hot. It's really hot. Some of our soldiers will find themselves in situations their ancestors never could have imagined. Okay, guys, uh, we're gonna try uh, the outfit. This is long enough. Just pretend I'm changing at the beach. Oh, it is not cold. <laughs> uh, vraiment, vraiment oh, wait a second. Grab that brick because there's only one button. Thing. How do people live like this? Ooh. Oh. Try kneeling. Sorry. <laughs> How would they wore this in? Like the heat, I mean, I can understand the uh, you know the cold, the winter, but it's heavy, it's restricting, and I haven't even put the putties on yet. <laughs> you get cold, you get soap. What have we gotten ourselves into? <laughs> As part of the film being made, the recruits will relive the battles of the First World War, leading up to the Battle of Vimy Ridge, training in a recreated army camp outside Montreal. That's what I want to know, yeah. But whether or not the cameras are there, their military experience will continue 24 hours a day. Pack up your troubles in your own kid flag and smile, smile, smile. Hey, I'm sorry, am I bothering you? Shut the fuck up. Listen. Grab your bags as quick as you can and move in front of the bus. Fuck me, how much shit you got? Listen up, I'm Corporal Hustleton of the PPCLI. You are now in 1914. You will have 20 seconds to sort out your kit. Once we start moving, we ain't stopping. Hey, come the One other NCO, take post at the end of the rear rank. Muggleton. Taff Gillingham had a great uncle who moved to Canada from England Bow. and trained Canadian troops in the First World War. Brian. Serge Royer is one of 15 real Canadian soldiers. Present, monsieur. Who are also First World War descendants. Blé. Well done. 
With the help of the Canadians and his team of British experts, TAF will supervise the military training. What we've set up here is a training camp of the Canadian Expeditionary Force, sort of circa 1915. And what we set out to do was take a load of Canadian civilians just as they were at the time. Shins up! Left! Right! Left! Right! Left! Right! Left! These people cross into another world. That's the whole point of what we do. You pick them up, you take everything modern away from them, and then you put them into another world, and it becomes the world they live in. Don't let them bring their mobile phones in or anything like that, because any of that stuff will burst the bubble instantly, and then you've lost it. Everything you own is going to go into that tent and be sealed up. Come on! I do want to go to bed tonight! They've come here for the experience. We'll give them the experience. If they don't want to do it, there's the gate. Welcome to the Canadian Army. We're a volunteer army. You have to pay attention to your instructions, okay, because we're going to be going to war here shortly. It's not a game, it's for real. If you don't pay attention and you think it's a joke, you will die. Here, you're going to rinse the plate. That's good, that's good. Cutlery. Yes. Heads to the outside, feet to the pole in the middle. Yes, it will be cosy. This is exactly how they were designed, not with comfort in mind. Don't worry, tomorrow you'll be signed off to sections and there will be a bit more space. I mean, don't forget, but once the war broke out, the, these huge armies were all civilians. They were as unused to the discipline 90 years ago as the, these guys are here now. Uh, when can we go to the loop? The recruits may not know what they've signed up for. All right, gents, make way for the fat man. <laughs> but they're beginning to find out. Faced with not only physical hardship, but unforgiving military discipline. You will severely fucking suffer. Not everyone will come out unscathed. Yes, double, double, double away, double away. Sunrise in the camp. The temperature is already 30 degrees. The weather forecast predicts an extreme heat wave. All right, we've got 15 minutes to get ready for PT. Military training has begun, and there's no turning back. Right there. Our recruits are starting to realize what they're getting themselves into. That man there, every single button on every single pocket is undone. Get it sorted. They'll be wearing wool uniforms in the sun and eating the food that their ancestors ate. This quarter loaf of bread that we are giving you is supposed to last you for the day. So you can eat it all now or you can save it to dip in your hot soup at lunch. They have two days to prepare until the film shoot begins. When the cameras roll, they will have to be trained soldiers. I just can't figure it out. <laughs> it's totally lost. You have to talk sweetly to it. Turn to the right and single file! Right! Turn! So, uh, oh, uh, so gas. It was actually banned under the various Geneva Conventions, the use of poisonous gases. You know, we had no idea it was coming, and that's why it was such a shock. There's the Canadian Division, 22nd of April, you know, with no means whatsoever of protecting themselves. There is no actual form of gas mask, but we do know that by the following morning, certainly the British Army were ordered to use the very first kind of gas mask, which was one of these. It had to be modified by peeing on it, And then you had to hold it over your face. What's the disadvantage of this? One-handed shooting. One shooting, which actually isn't possible. So it, it completely and utterly you know, debilitates you. It will save your life, but you, you, you just can't use your rifle. Any questions about gas? Sergeant? Yeah. Aren't they, uh, are we just going to be standing around, basically, and they're just going to yell gas, and we're going to run, or? Canadian Army, do you ever run away? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. 
<laughs> Good, sorry. <laughs> Just thought I'd better check that, you know, we might have come to the wrong place here. <laughs> no, Brits and Canadians don't do any running away, but no, no, that, that was the whole point, that, uh, that the ground was held. Um, so no, there won't be any running away done. The thing is, this yeah. is quite interesting for me. I've worked on a number of different projects um, where we've set up camps of different periods and trained civilians in period soldiering. And if you can train people to look, to act, to think like the soldiers of the time, you know, that, that's an enormous thing. Then they start to get an understanding of it. Stand there. Not everything about the experience is historically accurate, but these nine recruits had ancestors who were soldiers, and they signed up for training like everybody else. We had some great application from women who were representing male soldiers, and I did not think it was right for them to become nurses, just so they could participate in the film. We finally decided that we would have a section of women who would be soldiers, and there would be no difference between them and the male soldier. I'm, uh, I'm with the PLF Infantry Reserves in Halifax, so, so it, it's been a really big change compared to what I'm used to with urban combat training. No swear words. <laughs> and welcome to World War I. Hi, Mary. A little warm. Came from St. John, New Brunswick, which was socked in in the fog. So this is quite the climate change for me. Ben had a little trouble on the march this morning because I'm about a foot shorter than everybody else. So it's kind of hard keeping up with time, but I'm starting to get the hang of it. I'm Allison and I'm from Alberta, from Calgary. Well, and it was neat to walk this morning and feel the rhythm of all the boots, just how you see in movies and just how you thought it would be. But the first day they kind of went out of their way to make sure we knew we were men and not ladies. Look up your pants, stroke your women, stroke your women. You know, they said they weren't going to give us special treatment, but like on the first night, you know, the special treatment was that they kind of treated us a little bit more rough initially, but, but by the end of the day, they're kind of screaming at everyone. <laughs> I'm Lizette. I'm from Winnipeg, Manitoba. So. These are the descendants of the Royal 22e Regiment, the Van Dues. Très bien. The only Francophones in the British and Canadian armies, you might say they have a different relationship with authority. The heat wave has made life in the camp uncomfortable. Now it's becoming a medical emergency. Yeah, I'm dropping the flies right now because the heat. I'm down. One, two, three, four. I'm down five. I want this. I want this water to be as cold as possible. Somebody get over here and hold this thing up off my head. All right. I need her up, I need her braces off, and I need her shirt off. Get me three towels, please, ice them down. All right, listen up, all right? We're sitting at 59 degrees in the humidity right now. All right, the, the breeze and whatever, we're not gonna start seeing it cool down anytime quick. Make sure that they're drinking. Look for the signs of heat prostration, heat exhaustion. The first person you see not sweating, take them out. Okay, last question. Anyone more? One last question. Do they usually attack uh, during the daytime with the gas tax or in the evening with any yeah, well, It really depended. I mean, gradually, you know, everybody's tactics got cleverer as the war progressed. You know, everybody, you will all have come here with a reasonable preconceived idea about the First World War. 
that it was a futile slaughter, everyone gets killed for nothing and the tactics were crap. That's bollocks. My mission, the reason we've come all this way, is that by the time we've finished with you, you will go away having the understanding that the army that finally defeated the Imperial Germans in 1918 was the best army the Empire ever put into the field. And we need to, you are the people who are going to grow up in another 10 years, 20 years time, you people will be making television programs, you'll be writing articles in newspapers, if nothing else you'll be telling your grandchildren, actually it wasn't like that, your great 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 granddad didn't die for nothing, in their day those fellows knew exactly what they were fighting for. Stephen Workman, I'm a physician from Halifax, physician slash writer. I think I'm trying to understand. The World War One is, two, you know, two advanced armies meet in the middle of nowhere and kill each other for four years. How is it that human beings do that? What is it that drives us to do that, to go there? What is it that allows us to stay there? What is uh, what is it about humans that make us able to, to shoot and kill each other so effectively? And what we're actually filming tomorrow is the story of the big, of the first ever gas attack. At, uh, at St. Julian near Eat on the 22nd of April 1915. But hopefully, already these guys have got the idea they're in soldier frame of mind. They're looking, they're feeling, they're acting like soldiers. They'll follow orders, they'll get tired, they'll get really fed up, you know, no doubt about that. But hey, you know, what do soldiers do? Gentlemen, shall we go for a stroll? Yes, shall, we go for a, shall we go for a stroll? Yes, sergeant! Today's our first real like film shoot, so we're gonna be testing out some gas attacks. That should be pretty cool. Finally, our soldiers are marching into battle. But unlike their ancestors, these soldiers will have to face cameras, a film set, and the director's demands. Five. Remember, when we're going down there, bullets are whizzing over our heads. We're staying down. We want to make it home eventually in about four years. You're scared for your life, okay? You're, you don't even want to be out there. Easy, yeah! yeah. 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 Lee's grandfather was at the Battle of St. Julian. Through the smoke of the gas attack, it feels like ghosts could be watching. Private Harold Lee's was injured on this battlefield, taken prisoner of war after lying in the battlefield for four days with a rifle shot wound through his head. Took him over and uh, 
extracted the eye without any anesthetic. Yeah. Yes. Pretty hard to imagine, really. It's pretty emotional. I got the same. Yeah, it's really emotional. We're ready to go, you know. Sergeant, we can have everyone in position, please. Okay. In the air-conditioned makeup trailer, the actors in the film are living a different Great War experience. They're only on set during the day, and they're well taken care of. I'm going to have fun. I mean, I get to ride horses, I get to run around and, you know, shoot a gun and, you know, sort of live this glorious military history that we have. So it's kind of neat because I remember Justin Trudeau being born. Thrilled to be meeting me. He would say. Before she started. You get a good shot of that very masculine Talbot Papino who can't let his makeup run in the sun. Oh. Sure is pretty in those tight pants of his. A little bit jealous. Yeah, no smart. comment on the pants. Oh, my yes, yes. He looks very dashing. Oh, oh, give me a break. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. People forget just how much people who live in the experience will bond. And anybody who comes into it and just dressed up for the day, just worth the respect. Hey, Sergeant, we're going to have to go to the Thank you, ma'am. Among the descendants, the Great War experience is beginning to claim its casualties. Feet are uh, their foobar. The boots, coupled with walk marching, have just completely ripped every piece of skin off my feet. Fortunately, I'm going home tomorrow. I don't think that it, things were set up for the women here at all. And we have, you know, we can't, we can't even get out in the morning even clean ourselves properly because, you know, there's men around everywhere. Yeah, and the men are cleaning themselves around us, but, you know, it's a different story for a female to go out and clean in front of all the men. And, you know, this is, yeah, military, but it's not really real world. <laughs> It just makes the point that actually, that it, men and women aren't equal, especially when they have to live in such crude, unhygienic, uncivilized conditions. Really hot. All right, yeah. let's sort the problem out without. Stat goes up the chain of command like normal, so just. There was something about going down to the bath tonight. There's there's a plan for that. It's not the bath, it's the pool. There's a plan for that after parade at eight fifteen. Starting with, we're going to start with the machine gunners. Sam, listen, don't worry about it. It's not your problem. This is just an administrative group. <laughs> Nurses in the camp have special status. They're considered officers. Tonight, they get a chance to wash. The female soldiers don't have the same privileges. Very refreshing. The heat wave continues. After five days in the camp, the female soldiers still have nowhere to wash. Charge parade. Uh, these are people who have uh, broken military discipline. Uh, we have our own system of justice and we're just executing justice here. 
I had uh, Corporal Kinraid, who was insubordinate to me last night in front of the other NCOs, so she was reduced in rank from Corporal to Private. So that's what happened this morning. She was our senior, yes? Yes, so she was on we your side. Talk, yeah, she was on our side. And she was supposed to represent us, and so she was doing what she needed to do so that we could get heard, and then she gets put bashed down. That's not fair. We have a little cry now, apparently. It feels like there's no one else on our side, and this is very frustrating for us. I still feel like the women all just feel like still, they're just not giving the same respect. Well, that's how we feel. And you can't, you know, maybe you feel that we're not, but I'm telling you how we feel. We feel not, you know, and I know we're supposed to be soldiers, we're supposed to be men, but in the end of the day, we're still women underneath these costumes, and that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, every now and again you need to have a bit of blood blessing to keep the system working properly, and that was it. Very good. Before the troops are ready to fight the Battle of Vimy Ridge, there'll be more bloodletting to come. Morning. Morning, morning. And there's two plums. Delicious, thank you very much. Plums, plums, man, have a good shit. This is going to be better than the animal crackers and gravy we had yesterday. Thank you very much. Uh, things are a lot better. Things have gotten a lot better for the women. Respect. They build showers. We're still having a good time. So. The army's great. I like the fact that uh, the army sets up rules, they may look arbitrary, but you know them, and if you don't follow them, you suffer the consequences. And how often in life, when you make a mistake, do you get someone immediately telling you and punishing you for it? And there's no defense, you know, the rule is your jacket is down up or, or on your arm. Yes, Sergeant Major. Everybody, get moving. We've got to be on parade in position in 10 minutes. Around here, there are rules about everything, even having fun. And there's a limit on beer, one beer per soldier. What about those uh, beer? One beer. One beer, that sounds even... Just one would be good. <laughs> Next man. Sir. Last name? McLean, 46th. How old are you? 19. Do you smoke? No, sir. Good answer. Do you drink? Yes, sir. How many? One beer, please. Good answer. You, one beer, a smart, temperate man. What? Thank, thank you, sir. But just like during the war, some people find their way around the rules. Well, I it. <laughs> yeah. well, the mafia of the camp. Well, the mafia of the camp. Anything you want, we can get it. Professor. No, let me see that one's fine. Shut your mouth, Benji! Shut your fucking mouth, Benji! The only thing that holds these people together is discipline. It's the only thing. And in all the military manuals at the bottom of most pages, don't forget, discipline first, discipline last, everything left, discipline. And it's all done for a purpose. Comes the battalion, stand in! East! Uh, next big challenge tomorrow, I can't say at the moment, because if I told you, I'd have to kill you, because it's all top secret. An elaborate system of trenches has been kept secret from the descendants for seven days. Life in the trenches defined their ancestors' experience in the First World War. Now, a surprise exercise in night combat. They will be marching to the trenches for the first time but not everyone will answer the call. When you're all present, Canadian Machine Gun Corps. Yes, sir. Yes. All present. Vendus, Vendor! Where the fuck are you? Are you lot having a private fucking party or are you going to join us? My men have disappeared. Serious crime. I need a vehicle to get back and try and find them. I don't know what they're up to. You're the only Van Du who is here. Now, are you going to tell me where they are? I have absolutely no idea, Sergeant. So, the whole of the Van Dus have gone, 
leaving you behind, and you have no idea where they've gone. Yes, Sergeant. See this? Do I look as if I was born yesterday? I don't know where they are, Sergeant. Okay, we'll find that out later. Watch for the enemy. They know there's no this is an exercise, not for the film shoot, but to understand trench warfare at night. Disoriented, they will have to react to whatever happens. It sounds like the enemy is close at hand. And the Van Dus are still missing in action. have suddenly appeared, but in an unexpected way. They have attacked their own trench. Well, we attacked the trench, but it's not the enemy. Oh, God. Fuck. Caporal des biens. Caporal des biens? No. Turned up, huh? Yeah, there was them that just charged the trench over here. Interesting. Very interesting, isn't it? Okay. Fucking Van Dues. Even when they pretend they fuck things up. Well, they do. Interesting. That would be the enemy. This would be the front lines. So when you're attacking, you attack the enemy side. All right. Okay. It's corporal. Not yes, corporal. Right. Thank you. So this is corporal. On a peut-être fait une petite gaffe hier. Une erreur de communication. But what happened last night was inexcusable. Until very recently, it was the only crime which was still punishable by death in Canada. Because what certain members of that battalion did last night was desert in the face of the enemy. Frankly, they have proven themselves unworthy to be members of such an honorable regiment. Italian, Attin! Cha! Fall out! Pour mettre les gants? Vas-y. Ça passait pas, ça faisait montrer qu'on était indigne du 22e d'Angle. On est dessus. Il dit qu'on a déserté l'ennemi, on s'en allait faire des prisonniers. C'est ça, c'est ça, c'est ça, c'est ça, c'est ça. Capitaine a complètement mal jugé. C'est lui qui a déshonoré le 22. Ouais, c'est lui qui a déshonoré le 22. Moi, je peux répondre pour ça, c'est pas vrai. S'ils veulent tenir leur bout et dire que si on fait ça, on s'en va, ben. Demain matin, le papier va être fait, le téléphone va être fait, les billets vont être réservés, ça ne sera pas plus long que ça. Mais il n'y aura pas de 22 euh, pour Vimy. Non, non. c'est pas grave, ils paieront le prix. Il y a pas de le Canada Vimy. français à Vimy, il avait juste à nous garder. S'ils restent, tournent la page, puis ils foncent, ils peuvent encore finir en beauté. S'ils décident de flasher puis de s'en aller, bien, tous les anglophones qui vont retourner chez eux, quand vous allez parler des 22, c'est ça qui va leur venir à l'idée. C'est ça, qui, ça, ça m'écoeure. Ça, ça m'écoeure.
Nice the dry battle, morning. The battle ring is here. I have a piece of chalk from Vimy Ridge in my pocket and a Vimy Ridge ring that was made from after the battle. I just can't believe we're doing this. This is just awesome. It really means something to me. Right. Almost all the descendants have ancestors who fought at Vimy Ridge, the most important Canadian battle of the First World War, where some say a country was born. Birth of a nation, boys. First time all four Canadian divisions fought together as one. And that day they were the best army in the world. Yeah, we still are. <laughs> <laughs> you ready, uh, guys? Kill my rifle. Vimy Ridge. Yep. Dreaming about it all night. We're gonna do a damn good job. Let's go. Was that that? I think it's that the mic's on the phone. Ça c'est ton crise de problème. Je veux fucking broyer, tu vas broyer ailleurs. Boy post. We're not participating today because um, it's their day, so we want it to be an all Canadian day and we'll just stand and observe. After all, we've trained them up, we're proud to stand there and watch them. Oh, I feel like a father now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, they're sort of scratch parts, you know, that went away and then came back. Okay, we're splitting up, okay? Mark and first A cameras are going over there. We're going to work with the studs. You know, you're either in or you're out. Oh, great. All right, stand by. Everyone ready? It's a great day. Yeah, it's snowy and cold. Can't you tell? Vive la neige. What's happening to us as soldiers, the guys in my tent, and now you know we spent 12 hours a day together with lots of downtime to talk, and I, I probably know a lot of these guys as well as I know anybody in my life. And I can see, yeah, these are the guys that when you go into battle, you'd never, you'd never not go over the top with your buddies beside you. How could you? You know, what would you, they'd never look at you again. You'd, you'd, you'd be nothing in their eyes, and that's really all we have here, right? Is the, the camaraderie and friendship that we establish within within the people around us, and, and that is very real. Up on that reach. <laughs> that was the most unfucking believable scene I've ever seen. Thank you. Alors, t'es resté? Ouais, ben, regarde, moi, mon ganton qui est mort à 
Elle va t'aider Mimi. Fait que j'espère que mon grand-père. Il pas le choix de rester. Hein. C'est euh, sentimental. Il est mort euh, à la bataille. C'est majeur. Il ne pas passer. Hein. Uh, I have no word for it, but it's it's just a feeling of something has finally gotten off your chest, you know. You've had that feeling, you've come here, you wanted to know what it was like for him, what it must have been like. You managed to figure out some of what he's he's done. So many people's ancestors here at Vimy. I wonder if, if they could come back and tell us how authentic. I don't know. It feels authentic to me. one of the most emotive moments is nearly always the very last parade. You know, I thank them all for everything they've done and for their patience and all that kind of stuff. And, um, and just reminding them that somewhere, looking down on them, there's an awful lot of old soldiers who are also saying thank you very much. And I was proud of all of them. When I go back and read his book again, which I'll do as soon as I get home, it's going to have a whole new, whole new meaning. Um, when he talked about the marches and the, the wet feet. Vive les bottes mouillées, vive le pain de boîte, manger des rations limitées, puis vive en gang aussi, là, c'est pas évident. Là. Tu deviens comme. Euh, on avait juste une tablette de granola, on les séparait en douze, puis on était contents. Là. Fait que... And as much as I, I know that he wouldn't want me to go through anything like this, um, it's nice to do it just for a short time to sort of to honor his memory. and. What I'd like to do is go home and just uh, share the stories with uh, family and friends and hopefully teach other people about it. Because that's the point, really, is just to keep the memories alive. So that is why we'd like to get home. <laughs> oh, and also the showering bag. <laughs> you know, no matter how bad it gets, somebody's always had it worse. Thank you, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs>